In this module, we will discuss the hydraulic power. Let's begin with a brief overview. There are four functionally independent hydraulic systems. Each system is pressurized by a combination of a demand hydraulic pump and an engine-driven hydraulic pump. System 4 also has an electric auxiliary pump. All four hydraulic systems power the flight controls. Three autopilots operate through systems 1, 2, and 3. Note that the center autopilot operates through system 1, the right autopilot through system 2, and the left autopilot through system 3. Systems 1 and 4 power the landing gear. System 1 powers the nose and body gear. System 4 powers the wing gear. Systems 1, 2, and 4 power the brakes. Systems 1 and 2 power the alternate brakes. System 4 powers the normal brakes. Finally, System 1 powers the nose and body gear steering. Hydraulic System 1 consists of a hydraulic reservoir a bleed air driven demand pump and an engine driven primary pump. Systems 2 and 3 are identical to System 1 except the demand pumps are electric rather than bleed air driven. Like System 1, System 4 has a bleed air demand pump. System 4 also has an electric auxiliary pump. The auxiliary pump is used only for ground operations. The controls and indicators that operate the hydraulic systems are located on the overhead panel. A system fault light for each hydraulic system is located on the panel. These lights illuminate to indicate system low pressure, low fluid quantity, or excessive fluid temperature. The engine pump switches control the primary source of pressure for the hydraulic systems. Each engine pump has a low pressure light. Demand pumps provide additional pressure when system demand is high or when engine pump output pressure is low. Each demand pump has a low pressure light. Question. Answer A is correct. The center autopilot uses hydraulic system 1. System 2 is used by the right autopilot and system 3 is used by the left autopilot. We will now discuss the normal sources of hydraulic power. Each system has its own independent reservoir. The quantity in each reservoir is indicated on the ICAST status display. A value of 1.00 is the normal service level. The value displayed is a percentage of full. The reservoir quantity is at or below the refill level. The letters RF appear next to the quantity. This condition requires maintenance action prior to flight. Each reservoir is pressurized with bleed air to ensure a positive flow of fluid to the hydraulic pumps. A check valve maintains reservoir pressure in the event that bleed air is lost. The fluid to all engine pumps passes through shutoff valves. The engine fire switch must be in for the shutoff valve to be in the open position.
Pulling an engine fire switch closes the shutoff valve to the associated engine pump. This prevents the flow of hydraulic fluid to the engine pumps. Pulling the fire switch also depressurizes the engine pump. The pump continues to operate. However, it provides no usable pressure. Let's now discuss the controls and indicators for each system. Since the controls and indicators are similar for all four hydraulic systems, we will discuss only one system. Engine pump switch allows the pump to pressurize its associated system. It is normally in the on position. The engine pump produces hydraulic pressure when the engine rotates. The pump low pressure light illuminates when the engine pump pressure is low. With the engine pump switch off, the system is depressurized and the pump low pressure light illuminates. Question. Answer B is correct. Pulling the engine fire switch closes the hydraulic shutoff valve and depressurizes the engine pump. Let's now discuss the demand pumps. The demand pumps are controlled by rotary selectors with three positions, off, auto, and on. When the demand pump selector is in the off position, the demand pump does not operate. The demand pump low pressure light illuminates. The normal position for the demand pump selector is auto. With the selector in auto, the demand pumps operate automatically when engine pump pressure is low. During normal operations, the demand pump pressure light will remain extinguished. A demand pump operates automatically when the fuel shutoff valve is closed by the fuel control switch in cutoff or the engine fire switch pulled. Demand pumps 1 and 4 will operate automatically when the trailing edge flaps are in transit. or any time flaps are out of the up position and the airplane is in flight. With the selector on, the demand pump operates continuously. The demand pump low pressure light illuminates when the demand pump is commanded to operate and output pressure is low. The demand pump selector for System 4 has an additional position labeled AUX. Auxiliary pump is used only for ground operations. With the selector in AUX, the electric auxiliary pump operates when the engine pump output pressure is low. The number 4 demand pump will not operate and the demand pump low pressure light illuminates. Question. Answer B is correct. Question.
Answer A is correct. The auxiliary pump is used only for ground operations. With the selector in the aux position, the electric auxiliary pump operates when engine pump output pressure is low. The number 4 demand pump will not operate and the demand pump low pressure light illuminates. This completes our discussion of the normal sources of hydraulic power for the four hydraulic systems. We will now discuss non-normal operation. Our discussion will cover four types of non-normal conditions. Pump low pressure, system low pressure, system overheat, and system low quantity. Let's begin with pump low pressure. The ICAS advisory message, hydraulic pressure engine, is displayed when the engine pump output pressure is low. The engine pump low pressure light illuminates. Pushing the affected engine pump switch to off avoids possible pump damage and system contamination. The ICAS advisory message, hydraulic pressure demand, is displayed when a demand pump has been commanded on and the pump output pressure is low. The demand pump low pressure light illuminates. If there is an auto system failure, rotating the demand pump selector on removes the demand pump hydraulic message and extinguishes the demand pump low pressure light. If the demand pump has failed, the hydraulic pressure demand message will remain displayed and the low pressure light will remain illuminated. Rotating the demand pump selector off prevents possible pump damage and contamination to the system. The ICAS caution message, hydraulic pressure system, is displayed when there is a loss of hydraulic system pressure. When there is a loss of hydraulic system pressure, the system fault light, demand pump low pressure light, and engine pump low pressure light illuminate. Rotating the demand pump selector off and pushing the engine pump switch off prevents possible damage to the pumps and contamination to the system. The ICAS caution message, hydraulic pressure system, inhibits the individual pump low pressure messages in a hydraulic low pressure system condition. Recall that the three autopilots operate through hydraulic systems 1, 2, and 3. Selecting another autopilot maintains stable flight conditions. Let's now discuss excessive hydraulic fluid temperature. The ICAS advisory message, hydraulic overheat system, is displayed when the hydraulic fluid temperature in a system becomes excessive. The system fault light illuminates. Pushing the affected engine pump switch off helps reduce the hydraulic system temperature. The ICAS advisory message, hydraulic pressure engine, is displayed. Rotating the demand pump selector off prevents the demand pump from starting as the engine pump pressure decreases. With the engine pump switch off and the demand pump selector off, the ICAS caution message, hydraulic pressure system, is displayed. The ICAS advisory message, hydraulic quantity low, is displayed when a hydraulic system fluid quantity is low. The system fault light illuminates. When the reservoir quantity is at or below the system low level, the letters LO are displayed next to the quantity on the ICAST status page. 
Recall that three conditions will cause a system fault light to illuminate. System low pressure, low fluid quantity, or excessive fluid temperature. Question. Answer B is correct. Hydraulic System 1 powers the center autopilot and nose and body gear steering. Hydraulic System 1 also powers flight controls, alternate brakes, and nose and body gear actuation. Question. Answer B is correct. System low pressure, low fluid quantity, and excessive fluid temperature will cause the system fault lights on the overhead panel to illuminate. Question. Answer B is correct. When the reservoir quantity is at or below the refill level, the letters RF appear next to the quantity. This condition requires maintenance action prior to flight. 